Howdy, everybody. Here we are, all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. What false economy it is to accept substitutes for Horlicks malted milk. People who do that might think they are saving a few pennies, but they don't get full value for their money. They don't, for instance, get that fine, rich flavor that is distinctly Horlicks. None but Horlicks, the original, has that delicious, tasty flavor. And none can equal Horlicks for results. It's made only from rich, full cream milk and the best of wheat and malted barley. The nourishing, bodybuilding qualities of Horlicks can't be found in cheap imitations, which are merely mechanical mixtures of skim milk, inferior malt powder, uncooked cocoa, and a lot of ordinary sugar. Gambling with health doesn't pay. So don't accept mixtures that someone says are just as good. Be sure of what you're getting. Demand Horlicks. That's true economy. And has been for nearly 50 years. Good druggists do not substitute. And now, ladies and gentlemen, just a word about the flashlights which Lum and Abner offered to send to listeners. Frankly, folks, we didn't know that we had so many friends. And the number of requests for flashlights was so great that they cannot be made fast enough to send out promptly. But, of course, everybody who ordered one will get his flashlight. Not right away, but just as soon as is humanly possible. We know that you will bear with us in this matter. When you finally do get your flashlight, we know that you'll be delighted with it. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. If Lum had realized the trouble he was getting himself in for when he gave up the office of president to Abner, <laughs> he probably wouldn't have been so generous. Since Abner assumed the office, he has ruled the Jotham Down store with an iron hand, showing very little consideration for his partner. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, Abner is out of the store for a few minutes, and Lum and Cedric are taking advantage of his absence by getting a few minutes rest. Listen. Yes, but uh, look out, Mr. Lum. There comes somebody in the front door. Huh? Oh, I say, you better look out. Uh-oh. Who done that? Who done that? That blame that chair. Cedric, why didn't you tell well, me? Well, what's the matter, Lum? What you doing down there on the floor? <laughs> well, this blame chair is fixed up the word dumps you right out on the floor when somebody comes in the front door there. <laughs> well, where'd you ever get such an idea as that? No, I never got it. That's another one of Abner's inventions. <laughs> you see, that wire runs from the front door to a little trigger on the back of the chair there, and when you open the door, the front part of the seat in the chair there falls down and dumps you right out on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did I do in picking up a chair like that? Why, he don't want none of us sitting down whenever a customer comes in, so he rigged up this contraption. <laughs> well, it looks like it works all right. <laughs> yeah, it works too good. <laughs> the widow Abernathy come in this morning to do some trading. She sat down in that chair there to rest, and somebody come in the front door there and throwed her plumb out in the middle of the floor. <laughs> <laughs> she thought we played a joke on her, got mad and stomped out of the store. I never could see why. <laughs> well, it looks like he could figure out a better way than that to keep you fellas from sitting down. Yeah, but you know Abner, he's got to study up some invention all the time. <laughs> he's got so many contraptions around here, it's downright unsafe to be in a store. <laughs> now, it's got me to where I might not fear to wait on a customer. But he can't never tell when he's going to run into some device he's rigged up. Just look at the signs he's got up around here. Yeah, I just noticed them. Stay out of the showcase. This means you. <laughs> yes, and that don't mean me, though. It means uh, everybody, Mr. Lum says. Keep out of the cracker barrel. <laughs> yeah, he says he's going to put a stop to folks helping themselves to them crackers. Yeah, he's a fine one to be putting up a sign like that. I bet he's ate a wash tub full of them down there at my store. Why, of course he has. First thing he does when he comes in is grab a handful of crackers and stand there and eat them and talk. <laughs> oh, he's got more rules around here than Congress has. <laughs> Says we're having a new deal here in the store. New deal? Yeah, everything's all changed up. You know what he's got me doing now? <laughs> no, I haven't any idea, Lum. Well, I've got to get down at 6 o'clock every morning, open up the store, and then sweep out. Me, with my asthma. Well, somebody's got to do it, Lum. Yeah, but, you yeah. I just wished I'd knowed how he's going to act. I never would have given him that office, I'll tell you that. <laughs> just looked like being president went right straight to his head. Just ain't no living with him. Oh, well, I guess he'll calm down a few days, Lum. You was president so long here that I reckon it's just hard for you to take orders from somebody else. Yeah, I don't mind to take orders if he'd use any judgment about them. 
But he'd think he'd appreciate me letting him be president so much that he'd sort of make things easy for me. I think it just looks like he goes out of his way to give me all the hard jobs he can find. Well, that's because that you're not used to doing any of the hard work, Lum. Had me out there this morning washing the windows. Cold as it is. <laughs> he knows how bad us editors is for rheumatism. Well, you never have been bothered with the rheumatism, have you, Lum? No, I ain't, but I've got to be awful careful for it runs in our family. My grandpa had it something wonderful. Suffered for years with it. <laughs> oh, well, I think you will live through it all right, Lum. <laughs> I'll say one thing, you fellas sure got the store looking nice here. Yeah, yeah. It ought to. Me and Cedric have been on the jump ever since we opened up. Yeah, yeah, it, ain't, it ain't like it used to be when Mr. Lum here was president. Uh, uh, Dick, you better mind out. Here comes Abner. Mind out? Yeah, I mean, get up out of that chair. See, then he opens that door, you'll find yourself sitting out there in the middle of the floor. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Let me get yeah, up. I've been dumped out of there about a half a dozen times already. What's he doing with that shotgun? <laughs> See yeah, how the shape falls down there whenever you open the door? Well, what you fellas standing around for? There he goes. What'd I tell you? Oh, hi, Dick. I'll never see you. What you doing with that shotgun, Abner? <laughs> you ain't going hunting today, are you, Abner? <laughs> no, this is part of a device that I got figured out for a burglar alarm. Burglar alarm? Yeah, I, I just double dare anybody to try to break into this store now, Lom. Um. Now, Cedric, get busy. Get to straightening up the stock. We ain't paying you just to stand around for decoration. Mom, what do you want me to do, Mr. Abner? Fire! Uh, well, find something to do. Dust off them showcases. Well, uh, I've dusted them off about 11 or 8 times already today. Well, dust them off again. You can't wear that glass. I'll get to work. Well, Abner, wait a minute. You don't aim to shoot nobody with that shotgun, undoubtedly. Uh, no, I ain't going to shoot them. I let them set to shoot themselves if they break in. Well, now, you ain't going to get nobody to commit suicide just to break in the store here. No, you, you see, Lum, I'm going to rig this up there on the front door. So when they open the door, why, it'll pull the trigger and, and they'll shoot themselves. Now, you're just fixing to get somebody hurt at that thing. Well, they ought to be hurt if they try to break in the store. I bet I can sell a million of these things mm, when I get them fixed up. Just about kill off a batch of customers about what you do. No, no, I won't either. I ain't going to put it up down here except at night. At night? Yes, sir. Yeah, but how about me opening up the store in the morning? Huh? I ain't going to open up that door every morning and have no shotgun go off right in my face every morning. I don't get here. I, I forgot about that, yeah. Well, I, I reckon you'll have to come in the back door, Lon. Well, if I can come in the back door, what's to keep the robbers from coming in that way, too? Why, we'll just rig up a shotgun back there, too. Have two of them. Yeah, I'm glad you thought of that, Lum. Well, how am I going to open up if you've got a shotgun at both doors? Yeah, that's right, ain't it? Yeah. Well, about, about the only way I see for you to do, Lum, is just to come in through the window when you go to open up. We can just leave it unlocked at night. Yeah, yeah, that'll be fine. Yeah, that's a great idea you've got studied up there. Yeah. Yeah. Just leave the window unlocked and anybody can come in during the night if he wants to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, no. Here, here. Now. Let's see. Yeah. I reckon I better do a little more figuring on that. Yeah. You better figure out somebody else to open up at the same time. <laughs> I can tell you right now, I'm not going to do it with no shotgun aiming at me from all the doors and windows in the place. Yeah, well, I'll get it all worked out here. I've been so busy working out this sale that I ain't had no time to figure on it, Hartley. Sale? Yeah, I'm figuring on putting on a sale on a day or two. Uh, what kind of a sale, Abner? Well, I don't know yet. I just can't make up my mind. I can't decide whether to have a closing out sale or a clean sweep or a fall clearance sale. Or fall just... clearance, yeah. This would be a fine time to have a fall clearance right here in the early spring, if the way. Yeah, well, I thought so, too. Them, them fall clearance always does well, yeah. Well, what you need, though, Abner, is opening up sale, ain't it? Just starting up in business again this way. Yeah, a grand opening or something like that. That is, if you've just got to have a sale. Yeah, well, I'll set that down on the list, but I still think the fall clearance or the clean sweep to do better. Well, I don't see much use in you having a sale, Abner. You've got a brand new stock of merchandise here. There's no use to cut your prices now to move stuff. Why, of course not. Uh, 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 what you fixing to do there, Abner? Can't you read that sign? It says for you to stay out of that cracker barrel. Yeah, but that don't mean me. I'm the president. I can help myself any time. Oh, oh, oh. That's What's the matter? What you hollering about? What's the matter? Oh, I forgot about setting that dead blame mouse trap down in there for you fellas. Mm. Look at them fingers. Oh, up already. <laughs> well, it's just good enough for you. <laughs> Thought you'd catch me and Cedric and you catch yourself. <laughs> Maybe that'll learn you something. He got the wrong rat that time, didn't you, Abner? Yeah, or... Uh, no, no. Get up from there, Lon. That's a president chair. Let me sit down. All right. Take it. Take wow. it. Wow. I wish the president had been a-sitting in it when Dick come in a few minutes ago. 
Got me clean out there on the floor. Well, you oughtn't to be sitting in it. I told you and Cedric to be up on your feet when folks come in the door. Yeah, but the way that thing works, instead of standing up on your feet when the customer comes in, you're laying down, <laughs> picking yourself up off the floor. Well, I told you you oughtn't to be sitting down. Well, you oughtn't to be sitting in it either, Adam. Well, now don't tell me what I ought to do and what I ought to do. Well, I'm just saying, though, that if I was you, I wouldn't be well, sitting in it. Well, you ain't me, so I'll tend to my own business. Yeah, but... That's what I do. Well, it's too late now. <laughs> Who done that? Who done that? Come in, Grand Babe. I never was so glad to see you in my life. <laughs> well, the trouble with Abner's inventions, they don't seem to make an exception of the president. Ladies and gentlemen, we are told that Tom Stewart, just home from the office, is being greeted by his wife. Let's listen. Oh, there you are, Tom. Thought you'd never get home. Oh, there. What's the rush? Tom, I've got the best piece of news. Guess what? Somebody's married. No. Don't tell me your cousin's coming up for a month. Oh, now, Tom. Oh, all right, all right. Forget it. You found a new way to reduce them. Well, Tom, how did you get? The fourth in three weeks. Well, what did you do? Join a gymnastic meet? Now, don't be mean. No, it's something you drink. Now, I warned you, my dear, that's apt to be dangerous. But you drink this yourself, Tom. Oh, I do, eh? Well, it, it must be all right, then. Yes, it's Horlicks. Horlicks malted milk? Say, where's the catch? That's for building your health, not reducing. That's just where you're wrong. It can do both. You see, it's a matter of calories, Tom. Calories, eh? Say, who's been talking to you? Only Eleanor. She tried it herself and lost several pounds. You see, she drinks Horlicks at noon instead of eating a big, heavy meal. Oh, that's how she cut down the calories, eh? Yes. Horlicks is nourishing and sustaining enough to carry you right through until dinner time. Or if you do feel tired or hungry in mid-afternoon, a few Horlicks lunch tablets will give you a renewed energy. Well, I'm sold on Horlicks, of course, so go right ahead. Sounds to me as if you've gotten a good reducing idea for once. And Tom's right, folks. The Horlick plan certainly is a good reducing plan. A fine way to lose excess weight safely and without discomfort. Try the Horlick plan. A good glass full of Horlicks instead of a heavy meal at noon. You can get Horlicks malted milk, either natural or chocolate flavor, at your druggist. This is Carlton Brickert speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.